Hello, I'm Dr. Marla Shapiro. I sit on the board of the International Menopause Society, and today I'm joined by Dr. Sue Davis. Welcome, Sue, and introduce yourself to our audience. Hi, Marla. So I'm an endocrinologist, and I'm a past president of the International Menopause Society, and I run a research program for women at the Monash University in Melbourne, Australia. So today, let's talk about testosterone and when it's indicated, because this remains controversial, I think, wherever you go in the world. So to address this, back in 2019, the International Menopause Society led an international consensus on the use of testosterone for women. And it was overwhelmingly agreed that the only evidence-based indication for the treatment of women with testosterone is for postmenopausal women who are experiencing low desire with associated personal distress, which we also cause, call hypoactive sexual desire dysfunction. So before we talk about how to do that, the first question that we often get is, will testosterone help with mood or depression, fatigue, energy, any other kinds of symptoms that women often complain about during the postmenopausal years? So we would like to think that testosterone may help women with all those symptoms you've described, but in fact, research presently does not demonstrate this. Now studies specifically do demonstrate there is no benefit for general well-being um, and depressed mood. Cognitive function studies are very limited. So ultimately there may be some evidence for that benefit, but at this point in time, there is not evidence to support the use of testosterone for these symptoms. So let's talk about the safety and how one would prescribe it. Let's first talk about how one would prescribe it. In the menopausal years, must a woman be on estrogen if we're going to add testosterone in? So we used to think that to prescribe testosterone, women should also be on estrogen therapy. We now know that testosterone can be prescribed alone for low libido and postmenopausal women. Firstly, the low libido has to be formally diagnosed and other factors like antidepressant use, relationship issues, so on and so forth, have to be um, identified and addressed. But if it's felt that testosterone can be prescribed and it is a trial of therapy, then it should be prescribed as a transdermal um, therapy a patch, a gel, a cream, if any things like that is available, but not as an oral formulation. So if one is to prescribe testosterone, are there any baseline tests that a healthcare practitioner should undertake before the prescription? So we would usually recommend a general health check and particularly things like thyroid function or iron deficiency to make sure that a woman is not actually experiencing symptoms because of health issues that haven't been identified. We generally recommend a baseline total testosterone and sex hormone binding globulin level done, not because we're trying to find a threshold diagnostically as to who to treat, not to treat, but really there might be some women who might appear to have low testosterone linked to low libido, but in fact, the testosterone is normal or high normal. We wouldn't want to treat women in that setting with um, testosterone therapy. And in terms of safety, what are the side effects that one should be looking for? How do we monitor these patients? So it's, um, the most obvious side effect is from overuse of testosterone, and that's acne, oily skin, excess hair growth, which will indicate that the woman is applying too much of the topical therapy. We have not seen any adverse effects on liver function, um, blood parameters, insulin resistance, cardiovascular parameters, lipid levels, etc. If a woman is using a dose that restores her testosterone to normal levels seen in premenopausal women. So that raises the question, would you be following the blood testosterone while they're on? Should we be doing it a few months into it? Should we be doing it regularly or not at all? So we would recommend, and it's the guideline, the global guideline, the US Endocrine Society guideline, after initiating testosterone therapy, which we recommend is transdermal, a woman should have a blood test three to four weeks later just to check that she's not applying too much. We don't expect, if you're using a physiological dose, you don't expect a woman necessarily to have this demonstrated benefit within three to four weeks. But it's much better to know if a woman's using too much therapy before you review her several weeks later and to catch her before, before she might get side effects. We're not treating to a target testosterone level, but we would recommend that you 
aim to keep the total testosterone within the normal female premenopausal range, not the postmenopausal range, the premenopausal range. Right. And then how long can a woman be using testosterone? There's no limit of duration. Um, there's no evidence of long-term adverse effects, although we do not have long-term safety data. But having said that, a woman should continue to use it as long as, or may continue to use it as long as she feels she is benefiting. And occasionally women lose the um, reference point. And so sometimes women will choose to stop for a while to see if it makes a difference if they're using it or not. More often than not, my patients say, I felt that my libido has gone down and I want to restart the testosterone. So in many countries, testosterone is not available or approved for women. It's available in male formulations. So how do we, understanding that you have a conversation with informed consent and you decide together with your patient that you're going to do a trial, what, how would one actually dose it then? So there are different formulations available in different parts of the world. In Australia, we actually have a, a regulator approved testosterone for women. However, where that's not available, we would strongly recommend that women use a fraction, fractionated dose of a male formulation. So about the starting dose would be about a tenth of the dose that you would normally prescribe for a male and that you then you frequently monitor the blood tests. You also have to frequently monitor the patient to make sure because you could have a so-called normal blood level, but the woman might still develop acne and hirsutism because every woman's testosterone needs are different. We would recommend an approved male formulation in a small dose above that of compounded therapy, because at least if you're giving a, using an approved male formulation, you know that it is actually containing what it's meant to contain, and we know the pharmacokinetics. So I think that's such a valuable point because there is quite a bit of compounding that happens. And, and while our pharmacists are regulated, the actual act of compounding isn't regulated and one could never be quite sure. Yes, and we know that pharmaceutical products have to demonstrate a, a pharmacokinetics absorption, etc. So you can end up either a woman using an expensive compounded formulation and her blood testosterone level isn't changing, it's not even being absorbed. And I've seen women who have ended up with super physiological levels from compounded formulations. And that applies to whether it's a compounded um, cream or some, some people are using compounded implants, which we would not recommend. Right. And before I let you go, just one last question that we often get asked during the perimenopause, where we're beginning to see menstrual regularity and cycle transition and women will often then complain of a change in libido. Is it something that we can consider in the perimenopausal period of time or must one wait until menopause has occurred? So the first thing to do in the perimenopause is treat the perimenopausal symptoms. And I often find at this stage, if you treat the vasomotor symptoms, the sleep disturbance, vaginal dryness that sometimes is starting to develop, to develop, many women will not need testosterone at this stage. So yes, it can be used in the perimenopause, but I think first address the symptoms of the perimenopause other than low libido and see what, what um, comes from that first. And in the menopausal period, if we do have women who are on estrogen for all of those reasons as well, um, you can add testosterone in at that point. So testosterone can be used for postmenopausal women using estrogen alone, estrogen with progestin, and um, not on estrogen. I would add one point. I know in many countries, tibolone is available. Yes. I know it's just been approved in Canada or yes. about to be approved. We do not recommend the use of testosterone with tibolone because, tibol because you can end up with an exaggerated response with the testosterone. Right. And you're right. It has been approved in Canada. And because of the androgen effect, um, it does have that qualifier with it. And I think it's such a good point to have, me to have mentioned. Thank you so much for joining us today and having this talk with us. Thank you, Mello.